Of all the current points of contention in our society, there are few as polarizing and important as that of the U.S.-Mexico border. There are countless points of entry and exit along the division, but there is no area as important as Friendship Park on the California-Baja border. In one city, we will go in depth about the border, Friendship Park, and current day activism in the name of reuniting families. <laughs> Established in 1848 by the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the border took thousands of square miles of formerly Mexican land and annexed it to the United States with little care for Mexican nationals who were already living there and had been for some time. The border severed families and stole decades of tradition, but the initial intent of the border was not so aggressive. In fact, according to the preamble of the treaty, which ended the Mexican-American War of the 19th century, the intention of the division of land was to establish upon a solid basis relations of peace and friendship, wherein the two people should live as good neighbors. In the early 20th century, an economic crisis sent Mexico spiraling into debt. The border, once peaceful, turned to a point of contention as impoverished people came for a better life, which America often promised to provide to the world. There was a rise in crime as many people came across, but the vast majority of those arriving in the United States were poor and in need of a meal. Nonetheless, the local Americans did not take kindly to the change in their environment. The 20th century as a whole was when the U.S. government began its aggression toward increasing numbers of immigrants. The history books tell of quotas of Chinese and Eastern European immigrants, but the story they don't tell is of the Mexican border. Cities along the edge grew together, and the lines varied, and there was a constant exchange of people language, and problems. There was, however, a bright spot. Friendship Park, established by then First Lady Pat Nixon in 1971. Friendship Park was a small area along the border where families could be together. The park in the southwesternmost corner of the continuous states was an open area where friends and families separated by a fraught border and long history could meet. They hugged, shared food, talked, and attended the binational church, which still holds service there every single Sunday. It was a place of community. On the U.S. side, the border is gray and desolate. There are guards and metal fences and watchtowers but there is no real life. On the Mexico side, the border bustles with life. There's a garden against the wall painted into a celebration of life. There's a popular beach and nearby restaurants and an explosion of color, beauty, and culture. The wall, a symbol of division, has been painted into reality. The wall pictures sayings and imagery such as love trumps hate a flag that is half American, half Mexican. In most heartbreakingly, aquí es donde rebotan los sueños, meaning here is where dreams bounce back. Today, I've come down to the Mexico side of Friendship Park, where there is free public access and more importantly, life. All around, you can see the city life of people who do not live plotting to commit what is legally considered a misdemeanor. Here in Tijuana is where many asylum seekers denied refuge or, or immigrants deported wound up. In one year alone, 60,000 immigrants in the United States were deported to Tijuana, regardless of where they originally immigrated from in Central or South America. For the majority of them, life ends here. Some stay because it lets them feel closer to the family left behind in the U.S. Others, because they don't have the means to get home. A program called Somos Mexicanos aims to help reintegrate deportees, but it's a slow process. Tijuana is one of the most populated cities in Mexico, steadily growing in inhabitants, drugs, and homicide, and with neighborhoods built off San Diego leftovers. For a lot of people who don't live here, Tijuana is a tourist destination not to be stuck in after dark. 
an easy place to drink and observe. People associated with slums and crime, perpetuated by the words of an anti-immigrant, anti-Mexican government. Just behind me is the border wall. Here it is painted, lively, and populated. The Friends of Friendship Park, a volunteer organization dedicated to restoring Friendship Park to its original glory, planted a mix of indigenous and edible plants here. The other side of the border, cold and empty, seems a world away, as opposed to mere inches. Since I'm here during visiting hours on the US, there are people around who have come to see their families and exchange limited touch of pinky kisses. They are here because arbitrary lines do not erase family and love. And looking just past the end of the border, the ocean current moves on, uncaring of the lines that we've drawn. Friendship Park, however, did not remain for very long. As time moved on, border security was tightened to a stranglehold. In October of 1994, Former President Bill Clinton launched Operation Gatekeeper, which tightened security on the southern border, particularly where San Diego meets Tijuana. 9-11 marked a drastic increase in anti-immigrant nationalist sentiments among the American people, and in 2006, the Secure the Fence Act established more guards, more monitoring, and more physical borders between the United States and Mexico. In 2009, Friendship Park was closed to the public. Although it reopened after three years of fighting and political backlash, Friendship Park has not been the same since. No longer can people go to the park and see their loved ones, remember the way it feels to hold them in their arms. It has been made nearly impossible to continue the initial idea of Friendship Park because of strict policies on the U.S. side. To quote the binational organization, Friends of Friendship Park, which seeks to restore the park to its true intention. For most of the year, visitors on the U.S. side must hike through Borderfield State Park. Plan ahead for a 30 to 45 minute walk, 1.8 miles each way. For those who can even make it to the physical border, the challenges don't stop there. In order to get close enough to the border to touch the wall, visitors may have to provide proof of legal U.S. residency. Visiting hours are from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays, although only 10 people may approach at a time and may only stay for half an hour. Through tightly controlled, tiny gaps in the fence, visitors are allowed one small comfort at Friendship Park. Pinky Kisses Pinky kisses are a show of how divisive the border has become. The only contact people are physically capable of is reaching through the fence and touching the tips of their pinkies. The Border Patrol gave activists a narrow choice when the park reopened. Activist Jim Brown says, The Border Patrol gave us two choices. They said, You can either stand five feet away from the fence we will put up a little guardrail, and then we can keep the main border open with gaps so you can see faces pretty clearly. Or, if you want to get close, we're going to put up a mesh on it, but you can stand right against the fence with your face right there if you want. Those are your two choices. And we chose a combination. Mesh in one area, and the open area at another. Regretfully, the border has since been closed off everywhere except for the small meshed area, which is all that remains of the original spirit of Friendship Park. During the course of my investigation, I was able to ask a few questions to Scott Stopper, a Border Patrol agent and the San Diego Border Patrol school resource officer. While saying that our border is strong as it is, Mr. Stopper believes that it should be stronger. When I asked about Friendship Park, the first thing that Mr. Stopper said to me was that he wouldn't get too in-depth. He did say that people began passing contraband, illegal passports and drugs, and so fencing was put up in the area. He also told me that no matter how it is portrayed in the media or on TV, Border Patrol agents are everyday people that do a hard job in trying to keep everyone safe. Outside of local news sources, there is a distinct lack of reports about an interfaith protest 
which took place at the Friendship Park area of the border on the U.S. side in December of 2018. Protesters from all religions, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, indigenous, and more, came to the border to pray for the people seeking entry and community. Their protest, though peaceful, resulted in being screamed at by Border Patrol agents, physical aggression, and 32 religious leaders pushed face down in the mud and arrested with zip ties as handcuffs. There was no national coverage. Pero Migra está mostrando su fuerza, su poder para controlar lo que está pasando aquí en la, en la frontera. Porque nadie va a cruzar, es imposible cruzar aquí. Entonces, yo no sé que ni respetan este momento de oración y de fe. The people who live along the border, the locals, are those who have the most power to take direct physical action. For this project, I surveyed almost 200 high school students who live in San Diego County, which houses the U.S. side of Friendship Park. Only 4% of high school students in the area think that people should not be able to see each other at the border. Only 12.9% believe that people should not be able to hug at the border. Only 11.8% believe that the current excessive wait times for legal immigration and citizenship are acceptable. By and large, the people who live closest to the point of contention are on the side of Friends of Friendship Park. They believe in the importance of families being able to see and touch each other. They believe in the importance of Friendship Park, even if the schools have failed to teach their students about its presence and history. Here is where ordinary people have the chance to do something about injustice where our politicians and government do nothing. Right now, the biggest push of Friends of Friendship Park is the Let Them Hug campaign. Despite needing no physical changes to the border along Friendship Park, visitors on the U.S. side are not allowed to the area where the slatted fence would allow loved ones the luxury of embrace. You can sign the petition right now at the link in the description. You can donate right now at the other link to help people along the border fight and connect, as well as sow the seeds of the binational garden of indigenous and edible plants to support a high homeless population left by unnecessarily strict regulations the United States currently enforces. You can find or organize protests of civil disobedience at Friendship Park if you are someone who lives close to the border, as my peers and I do. We have the ability to make change and the data shows that the people who live on the border, who face the most risk for any possible negative consequences, are filled to the brim with compassion and caring. On both sides of this tight border are people, human beings with hearts full of love and longing, and like the ocean, should be able to roam freely.